Okay, so a lot of people are going to be shocked that they're going to get this basic math problem wrong. Matter of fact, there's actually two questions here. And the first is, what is the LCM? And the LCM stands for the least common multiple between these two numbers here, 18 and 60. And the second question is, what is the GCF? This stands for the greatest common factor between these same two numbers. Now, I'd like you to do this without the aid of a calculator. And if you can figure this out, well, go ahead and put your answer into the comment section. I'll share the correct answer in just one second. Then, of course, we'll fully explain exactly what the LCM is and how to find it and what the GCF is and how to find it. This is very important, not only in basic math like uh, arithmetic, but in algebra as well. But uh, before we get started, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John, and I have been teaching middle and high school math for decades. And if you need assistance in learning mathematics, check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if this video helps you out, or if you just enjoy this content, make sure to like and subscribe, as that definitely helps me out. Okay, so let's go to take a look at the answer. We have a lot to cover, but the answer is actually uh, the LCM and GCF between these two numbers is the following. So the LCM is 180 and the GCF is 6. All right, so how did you do? Well, if you got this right, that is fantastic. I definitely have to give you a happy face and A plus a 100% and multiple stars so you could brag to your friends and family that indeed you are a certified professional expert in the area of finding the LCM and GCF. Now, your uh, friends and family may not be impressed with that. They might be saying, no, this stuff's kind of boring. Leave me alone. I'm going to go back to my Netflix. Well, listen, uh, it's actually very good that you were able to uh, find the LCM and GCF of these two numbers because if you can't do this, again, you're going to have a tough time and uh, more advanced math. And if you didn't get this right, well, this would be a nice little review for you. And uh, let's go ahead and get into this right now. Now, some of you might be saying, well, I knew this way back when uh, you know I was in school, and that's perfectly understandable. Uh, maybe some of you have been away from school for you know, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 years, so I totally get it. So let's go down memory lane and uh, figure out exactly how to first find the LCM. We'll look at the GCF here in a second. Okay, so what is the LCM? So as I uh, uh, said earlier, the LCM stands for the least common multiple. And anytime you have an acronym uh, in math, especially, you know, the acronym is kind of self-explanatory. What does it mean? Well, it means the least common multiple. So it's a good idea to understand what a multiple is. So if we understand what a multiple is, and maybe we're looking for uh, common, uh, common multiples between these two numbers. Maybe we're actually looking for the least common multiple. Well, that's exactly what we're trying to do. So let's go ahead and understand what this word multiple means right now. And let's go ahead and take a look at uh, 18 first. We'll look at 60 here in a second. So what is a multiple? Well, a multiple, this is actually not that uh, difficult of a concept. All we're going to do is take our number and we're going to start multiplying it by 1 and then 2 and then 3, etc. So 18 times 1 is the first multiple of 18. That's 18. Okay, so 18 is actually the, a multiple of 18. Okay, now multiples, you know, if you look at this word here, it has multiplication in it, right? So 18 times 2 is 36. That's the second multiple of 18. 18 times 3 is 54. That is a uh, the third multiple of 18 or a multiple of 18. And of course, we could just continue to list multiples of 18 by uh, multiplying 18 by 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, et cetera, et cetera, right? So we're going to list out all these multiples. We'll list out a bunch of multiples of 18, and then we'll do the same thing for 60. Now, uh, the first multiple of 60 is 60 times 1. That's 60. The second multiple of 60 is 60 times 2. That's 120. And then here we have 180. Now, you can see 180 is circled because it's uh, 180 is the first common multiple, okay? So if we're looking at our list here, like the first multiple of uh, 60 is 60. So if I'm looking through my list, I'm like, well, here's 54. Whoops, I, I kind of skip over 60. I go to 72. So uh, 60 is not going to be a multiple of 18. As we kind of proceed here, we pass through 108, 108, and now we're at 126. We're like, oh, there's 120 is not going to be a multiple of 18. So we have to continue to kind of list out a bunch of multiples of uh, these two numbers until we finally 
define a common multiple, okay? And that will be our least common multiple. So the least common multiple between 18 and 60 is 180, and this is exactly what it means. Now, this uh, way is, I think it's a good way to kind of understand the concept of the LCM, but this is not the best way to find the LCM. It's a way that you need to under, need to know um, how to do because it kind of, you know, perfectly represents what the LCM stands for. But let's go ahead and take a look at another way to find the LCM, and this is critically important when we want to find the LCD, okay, because the LCM is effectively the same thing as finding the LCD. So imagine, uh, let's take this uh, number here, but let's put 18 as the denominator in a fraction. So maybe like seven over 18. And let's say for 60, we had like 11 over 60. And I wanna add it, I want to um, add these two fractions here. So in order to add two fractions, I need the same denominator. So here we do not have the same denominator. So a lot of you might be uh, saying, hey, Mr. YouTube Math Man, don't we need to find the LCD? And you would be exactly correct. And the LCD is finding the LCM between 18 and 60. So if you can't uh, find the LCM, you're not going to be able to find the LCD. And this procedure that I'm gonna show you here in a second uh, of course, we're using numbers here, is the same thing we use in algebra, okay? And a lot of students uh, struggle, you know, with this concept of finding the LCD in algebra because they never really mastered how to find the LCM in arithmetic, okay? So this is really important. So let me go ahead and show you this procedure right now. Okay, so here is our two numbers, 18 and 60. And what I'm showing you here is the prime factors, or actually factor trees to find the prime factors of these two numbers. So let's go ahead and focus our attention here on 18 first, and then of course I'll go through 60 here in a second. So what we wanna do is list out all the prime factors of these re, uh, respective numbers. Now, what is a factor of a number? So let's take 18, uh, uh, some, um, well, a pair of factors for 18 would be nine and two. Six and three are also factors, but any two numbers or two or more numbers that you multiply together such that you get back to this number here is a factor. So nine and two are factors of 18. But two is a prime factor because it's a prime number. Nine is not a prime factor because it's not prime. Remember, a prime number is a number where its factor is only one and that number. Okay. All right. So hopefully all of you are with me. So let's go ahead and uh, find the prime factors of 18. And the best way to do this is to use uh, a factor tree, which of course uh, we're looking at right now because this, you know, has branches. It kind of looks like an upside down. Well, not upside down. It looks like a little tree, maybe like a little Christmas tree. Okay. So let's go ahead and go through this right now. So 18, and of course you can start with six and three. It doesn't make a difference. You'll end up at the same place. So I'm gonna start with nine and two. I'm just gonna start listing pairs of factors. So nine times two, these are factors of 18. I'm gonna circle any factor that's prime along the way. Okay, so two is prime. Uh, nine is not prime, so I can continue to factor nine. So nine is the same thing as three times three. Three is uh, three and three are prime factors, and so is two. So uh, we can't go any further. So we have all the uh, factors of 18, all the prime factors. Now, what I'm going to tell you here uh, is critically important, this step. And that is if you have any factors that, any prime factors that repeat, you want to write those as powers. So three times three, we're going to write as three squared times two. So three squared, of course, is nine times two, which is 18. Okay, so 18, its prime factors uh, is uh, three squared times two. Again, you may not have repeating factors, but if you do, you have to write those as powers. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at 60. So 60, there's different ways you can approach this. Uh, I'll start with six and 10. Uh, six and 10, both are not prime, so I'm not gonna circle them. So six, I can write that as three and two. These, of course, are prime. 10 is uh, two and five. These are prime, so all these are prime factors. So um, I have some repeating factors here, two, so I'm gonna write this as a power, so that'd be two squared times three times five. Okay, so this is really important, again, uh, writing repeating factors as a power and make sure you have everything listed out in terms of its prime factors. Okay, so how do we find the LCM now? This is not that difficult. The LCM, uh, the least common multiple, is going to be the product of all the unique prime factors. And we have to consider all these factors and all these factors, all the uh, prime factors of uh, both numbers, or, or uh, you can actually have more than just two numbers involved. 
but we have 18 and 60, so here's all the prime factors. But if we take a look here, let's focus in on two. We have two right here, but we have two squared. So do I have to write two and then another two squared? So in other words, we're gonna list out all the unique prime factors. Well, here is the deal, okay? This two right here is really two or two to the first, okay? This one is two or two to the second. What we need to do is uh, write only the highest power of any repeat, uh, factor that's the same. So I have a two here, I, I have a two over here. So if you have um, the same number sh uh, show up twice, but to a different power, you always just take the one to the highest power. So all we need is two squared. We don't need the two to the first. Uh, the two squared represents that two to the first, and hopefully that makes sense. Okay, so let's go and take a look at, at three squared. We have a three squared here, but we have a uh, three here, but this is three to the first. So which one are we gonna use? We're gonna use three squared and our LCM. And of course, we're gonna be multiplying all of these, uh, all these uh, prime factors. So we're kind of scanning, and well, I have three squared too. We already kind of looked at that. Oh, don't let us forget about this fives. So that's this has to be represented in our LCM as well. Okay, so now that we have all these prime factors, represented, uh, what we need to do is simply just multiply these together. So two squared is what? That's four. Three squared is what? That's nine times five. And if we do this lovely multiplication right here, we get to 180. Now, some of you might be saying, hey, Mr. YouTube Math Man, I actually like the other way better. It was easier. Well, I'm telling you right now, with more uh, difficult numbers and in algebra, you need to understand this procedure right here. So it really comes down to your ability to factor and then, of course, your ability to just build the LCM. So this is how we find the LCM, the least common multiple. I gave you two ways. So let's go ahead and take the next step, which, of course, is having you quickly subscribe to my YouTube channel before we look at the GCF. Now, I definitely need your support. You know, although I've been on YouTube for a long time and I'm uh, very fortunate enough to have a pretty good amount of uh, people follow my instruction, I want to reach more people, okay? Right now, the news is not good for um, math proficiency on a kind of a global level, unfortunately. Uh, proficiency seems to be going down, okay? Why is that? It should be going up because the need to learn math has never been, you know, more important, especially with technology, you know, uh, you know, it's critical that you have strong analytical skills. Uh, but for some reason, you know, a lot of students continue to struggle in math. Let me just give you a quick, you know, my little two cents on how you can improve in math if you want to truly learn math. Now, there's two things. The first is there are no shortcuts, okay? So if you feel like you're bad in math, you're like, I'm not good at math, I don't understand math. Well, you may have been spending a lot of time looking for the, you know, like the perfect shortcut or the perfect little tutorials, you got to stop looking and really just kind of have to buckle down. So the first thing is just realize that you're not alone. Everybody who's mastered anything has to put in the time. Okay. So to learn math, it takes work, it takes time, but it's a fascinating subject. Okay. And you are definitely intelligent enough to learn it. But here's the, uh, the second part of the formula that if you're going to, you know, learn math, you need, it ha you, need, you need someone to explain it in a way you like and understand that's fully comprehensive. And this is the problem with taking shortcuts because you can maybe have a quick little video explain to you how to do a problem here, problem here, problem here. But if you don't have the concepts down, if you don't really, if you haven't mastered the actual foundational concepts, you're going to be building, you know, uh, your proficiency on a shaky foundation. So find someone to teach you this stuff. And if you don't have anyone to teach you math in a way you like and understand that's fully comprehensive, well, guess what? I would love to be your math teacher. So go ahead and hit that subscribe button. It's like I've gained a new student. And if you're going to do that, you might as well hit that notification bell as well. Okay, so now let's go and take a look at the GCF. And the GCF stands for the greatest common factor. Again, Acronyms here are kind of self-explanatory, greatest common factor. So we know what a factor is because we looked at prime factors. We understand what the word common is, and I think we understand what the word greatest means. So let's go back to our factor tree here and uh, kind of list out these factors, okay? So we'll list out the prime factors. So we have 18 and 60. So um, again, uh, we're going to uh, go 9 times 2. Again, this could be 6 times 3. Then we have 3 times 3 times 2. Okay, so these are the uh, factors of prime factors of 18. And then for 60, 
we have, uh, of course, the, here's the factor tree again, same uh, process, six and 10. Uh, here's all the prime factors of three times two times two times five. These are all the prime factors of 60. Now, this, this is actually quite different, okay? Because we now we want to find the greatest common factors. So we have to look, hey, what factors uh, does uh, 18 and 60 have in common? Okay, well, first of all, we need to list out all the prime factors. It's much easier to do this. So let's go ahead and uh, uh, kind of review what I just did right here. Okay, so we have a three here and a three here and a two. This has a three, this has a two and a two and a five. So they certainly have a three in common. Now this has two threes, 18 has two threes in it. 60 only has one three. So the only common factor that we can kind of um, consider here is a three. They have a three in common. So our GCF, we're gonna uh, kind of build this the same way as we built kind of like the LCM. Okay, we're gonna just kind of list out what common factors they have you know, obviously in quote unquote, uh, you know, common, right? So they have a three in common. Now, uh, one three, okay, to be specific, although 18 has two threes, we can only consider what exactly they have in common. All right, so let's go over here to 60. So 60 has two twos in it, but this uh, 18 has a two, so they have a two in common, one two in common. So we're gonna put that as part of our GCF. Now here, 60 has a five in it, so uh, 18 doesn't have a five as a factor. So the only common factors between 18 and 60 is a three and a two, one three and one two. So if we just multiply these together, three times two, that is six. And of course, this is the greatest number that can go into both 18 and 60 would be six, right? So 18 divided by uh, six, of course is three and 60 divided by six is 10. So that's the largest number that goes into those numbers uh, without a uh, remainder. Okay, so that's basically it with the GCF. The GCF is far easier. Uh, the LCM, I mean, this is all uh, important because in the GCF, you learn how to factor out the GCF, greatest common factor in algebra, but you can't deal with fractions unless you really understand the LCD, which of course means uh, understanding the LCM. Okay, so as I indicated, probably a lot of you um, forgot this stuff. We'll kind of give you the benefit of the doubt. You might be saying, yes, I learned this, but I learned this way back in 19, well, for me, it was like 1970, maybe eight or something like that. I can't remember. All I know is that it was pretty cool going to elementary school in the 70s because when you went out to play for recess, you, uh, you pretty much can just, you know, do what you wanted to do. We'd all come back in with bruises and whatnot, but I guess that was kind of fun back in the good old days. Uh, but here's the thing. If you need help with basic math, okay, you got to check out my Math Foundations course. Uh, you'll find a link to it uh, in the description uh, below. Now, if you want to take it, the, well, let me just tell you real quick in this particular course, this is a three chapter mini course. It will go over all this stuff uh, and just kind of be, it's a good review for those of you that want to kind of brush up on your basic math skills. Now, if some of you might be saying, well, you know, I used to be really good in math. Matter of fact, uh, you know, you probably were very good in algebra, geometry, trigonometry. If those of you out there want to relearn all your math skills, well then check out my math skills rebuilder course. Not only do I cover basic math in there, I teach you a ton of algebra, geometry, trigonometry, probability and statistics, very uh, well-rounded um, uh, you know, course, uh, you know, just more practical math skills. And uh, you know, by the time you finish this course, you can be ready for more advanced math courses if you want, okay? So it's really up to you, but uh, I have other courses. I'll list those out in the description as well. But here's the thing, okay, when it comes to math, all right? Uh, you know, just keep this in mind. If you really truly want to learn math, always, you know, check in on how well your foundational skills are. Okay. Like, you know, Hey, and don't feel bad if you don't know something like, don't feel like, you know, I can't, you know, I feel so, uh, you know, um, you know, like I'm not good in math because I don't know how to deal with fractions. Guess what? You're not alone. Right. But it's not that difficult to strengthen these skills. And hopefully this little video helps you out. And if that is the case, don't forget to like and subscribe. And with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.